Welcome to Senior High School Mathematics. This time, let us have propositions under General Mathematics Quarter 2, Week 7, based on Curriculum Implementation and Learning Management Matrix for K-12's Most Essential Learning Competencies. Here are our learning competencies. Illustrates and symbolizes propositions. Distinguishes between simple and compound propositions. Before we continue, let us ponder on this. Be a free thinker and don't accept everything you hear as truth. Be critical and evaluate what you believe in. This is by Aristotle. Let us begin with propositional logic. It is the area of logic that deals with propositions. It is based on the three laws of Aristotelian logic. Number one, the law of identity. Everything is the same as itself. Or we say a statement cannot remain the same and change its truth value. Next is the law of excluded middle. Something either exists or does not exist. Or we say every statement is either true or false but not both. The third one is the law of non-contradiction. Nothing can both exist and not exist at the same time and in the same respect, or no statement is both true and false. These are given not just as nice rules of thumb to follow or ways that one should think, Aristotle identified this as necessary conditions for thought. People sometimes try to produce counterexamples to these laws by pointing out how statements can become true or false depending on the condition. For example, it is raining. This might be true now but was false yesterday or it is halfway between raining and not raining. But these attempts always involve changing the reference of the statement. Once we get the reference of the statement clear and explicit, it does not seem possible for a statement to make sense and violate these laws. Proposition, this is a declarative sentence that is either true or false but not both. In the language, we learned about the four types of sentences according to functions. These are the imperative, interrogative, exclamatory, and declarative sentence. So we treat the declarative sentence with the same definition as in the proposition. So, for a sentence to be a proposition, it must be a declarative sentence. And in addition, it is either true or false, but not both. Let us have some examples. The following statements are propositions. Number one, three is an odd integer. So this is a proposition because this is a declarative sentence and in addition, it can be true or false. This time, it is true. Number two, Quezon City was once the capital of the Philippines. A declarative sentence and this is true. Number three, 12 divided by 4 equals 3, a mathematical sentence that is also declarative. And this is true. Square root of 3 is an integer, a declarative sentence, and this is false. Still, this is a proposition. Number 5 x plus 2 equals 2x when x equals 2. So this is a declarative sentence and this is true because the value of x is identified or defined. Let us proceed. 
to the next examples. The following statements are not proposition. Number one, who are you talking to? This is not a declarative sentence but an interrogative sentence. Therefore, this is not a proposition. Read this sentence carefully. So, this is giving an instruction, an imperative sentence. Hence, this is not a proposition. Please listen to your parents. The same as number two, this is not a declarative sentence. Hence, this is not a proposition. Number four, x plus four equals seven. This one is a mathematical sentence which is also a declarative sentence. However, unless x is assigned a value, just like in the previous slide, or is otherwise prescribed, the sentence is neither true nor false. Hence, this is not a proposition. Number five, this sentence is false. So what happens if you assume that this statement is true? Is it false? This is called a paradox. It is neither true nor false. Hence, this is not a proposition. If a proposition is true, then its truth value is true, denoted by capital letter T. Otherwise, its truth value is false, which is denoted by capital letter F. Let us have some examples. State whether each of the following is a proposition. If it is a proposition, what is its truth value? Number one. U plus V equals W. This is not a proposition. Just like um, X plus 4 equals 7 in the sentence from the previous slide, same reason. The values of U, V, and W are not assigned. Therefore, this is neither true nor false. Hence, not a proposition. Number 2. The Philippine Declaration of Independence was proclaimed on June 12, 1898. This is a proposition. And what is its truth value? Capital letter T because this is true. Number 3. Square root of 2 is an irrational number. A declarative sentence. This is a proposition. The truth value is true. Next, number four. Why should you take discrete mathematics before automata? This is not a proposition because it is an interrogative sentence. Number five. X plus five is greater than seven when X equals two. The value of x is assigned, therefore, this is a proposition. However, this is false. Number 6. There is an integer x such that x squared equals 4. So, this is a proposition. The truth value is true. Number 7. Answer this question. This is not a proposition because it is an imperative sentence. Number 8. 2 plus 6 equals 8. A mathematical sentence. A declarative sentence. Therefore, this is a proposition and it is true. Number 9 x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 9. A declarative sentence, but this is not a proposition. Again, the value of x is not assigned. Last one. Do not disturb. This is not a proposition. Propositions are usually denoted by small letters. 
Mindanao is an island in the Philippines is read as P is the proposition, Mindanao is an island in the Philippines. A compound proposition is a proposition form from simpler proposition using logical connectors or some combination of logical connectors. Some logical connectors involving propositions P and or Q may be expressed as follows, not P. P and Q. P or Q. If P, then Q. Where P and Q are simple propositions. A proposition is simple if it cannot be broken down any further into component propositions. Let us have some examples. For each of the following propositions, determine whether it is a simple or compound proposition. If it is a compound proposition, identify the simple components. Number 1. 4 factorial is equal to 24. This is not an exclamatory sentence. The exclamation point is a mathematical symbol that means factorial. So this is read as 4 factorial is equal to 24. This is a simple proposition. Next, number 2. It is not the case that square root of 2 is a rational number. Okay, this is a compound proposition. And what is the simple component? The square root of 2 is a rational number. This is of the form, not P. If P is the proposition, the square root of 2 is a rational number. Next, number 3. If you study hard, then you will get good grades. A compound proposition. This is of the form, if P, then Q. If P is the proposition you study hard, and Q is the proposition you will get good grades. Therefore, the simple components are, you study hard, you will get good grades. Next, x over x plus 3 is a rational expression, a simple proposition. Next number, if you are more than 60 years old, then you are entitled to a senior citizen's card. And if you are entitled to a senior citizen's card, then you are more than 60 years old. This is a compound proposition. The simple components are you are more than 60 years old and you are entitled to senior citizen's card. Next example, given the following simple propositions, construct the indicated compound proposition. P is the proposition 2 is an even integer. Q is the proposition 3 is an odd integer. R is the proposition 2 times 3 is an even integer. T is the proposition 3 plus 2 is an odd integer. Letter A, not P. So we say, 2 is not an even integer. Next, if Q, then T. If Q, then T. So we say, if 3 is an odd integer, then 3 plus 2 is an odd integer. Next, letter C. P and Q. 
So we say 2 is an even integer and 3 is an odd integer. Next letter, letter D. Q or P. That is Q or P. Hence, we say 3 is an odd integer or 2 is an even integer. Next one. If P, then R. If P, then R. If 2 is an even integer, then 2 times 3 is an even integer. That is all. Thank you for watching. Exercises on this topic may be downloaded from the description of the video. Please subscribe for more math lessons.